Yo, what's up guys and welcome to day three of the Oricorial Battling. I, of course, am PokemonMD and we're back on the VGC ladder for this part of the road to rank on the uh, championship ladder. We are 1573. We're doing well with this team, um, though we definitely are making our share of mistakes. So hopefully you guys have been enjoying, of course. If you are, feel free to leave a like after, of course, if you do enjoy. Uh, you can check out the playlist down below if you want to see anything else that I've uploaded thus far. And like I said, we're wearing my PokeMD beanie. I recorded these three in a row just to make sure that I'm doing a face cam for you guys. Uh, but if you guys want to pick up the PokeMD beanie, you can. Link to it is down below. In the description, it is available forever. As long as Designed by Humans is up and they, uh, they like me. So if you guys want to pick it up, you can as well as a bunch of other Pokemon merchandise. But really enjoying this team by my boy uh, Adam. Adam Mac. And uh, yeah. It's it's been just so fun. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Like it's been so fun just getting little sweets of Oricorio. Like I love teams like this. Like I, I, of course I love Standard, right? I mean I play OU. I love Standard, but I definitely love or I play a really uh, a way better than me opponent or higher rated than me opponent. So opposing weather. That's just a Standard team. I've played this a lot. Uh, it's HP Fire thing Curse Constant to Crush. Uh, Gigalith. Hmm. I'm not sure the best course of action versus this type of team. I actually don't like Coco, uh, Oricorio as much in this one. Like, Feramosa is really good because it beats everything. I'm not sure. I guess because it's opposing weather, I'm supposed to lead off a Torkoal and whatnot. Let's lead Torkoal Lilligant. Because it still threatens, uh, it still threatens, um, the, the Gigalith a lot. I do like, I still do like Crocodile in the back, and we'll try Oricorio. But this is a, I've never played this matchup before, so, it's still a learning experience, but I've been bringing the same things. He said, particularly against opposing weather, I'm supposed to bring Lilicol, Crook, and Oricorio in the back. I'm not sure though. We'll see. Crocodile deals well with Gigalith though. Like it, it checks it relatively well. I'm assuming Porygon, Gigalith, Cartana maybe. Tapu Fini, Tapu Coco. So not the worst turn for me. You'd assume that Coco would protect here. Misty Terrain went before Electric Terrain, so Scarfini. All right, so Scarfini confirmed. Which means that that boy definitely cannot protect. I'm assuming a Soak and... Uh, I'm assuming my opponent's going to Soak or attempt to Soak Lilligan, but that doesn't make much sense considering Lilligan can also Bloom Doom into Fini. So I'm going to switch out um, Torko into Oricorio and I'm going to go for the Revelation Dance. I'm thinking that Tapu Fini will switch out. And I'm thinking that Tapu Coco will protect. I could be wrong though, but we'll see. But either way, I get in my scarf. Like even if he goes for soak, I get in like scarf. Uh, yeah, that works out for me. I'll take that. So I get in my scarf uh, crocodile after anyway. So I will definitely take this turn. And next turn we're just gonna double attack into Porygon after I Quiver Dance. Like we're gonna or we're gonna attempt to double attack. I'm gonna go for my Z move into Porygon and hope that Petal Dance hits Porygon and both Petal Dances hit Porygon. But as a hundred percent scarf, uh, scarfini. So beautiful quiver up for both my mons. There's not much you could do to actually touch both mons too, which is pretty cool. And um, we've seen three of my opponent's Pokemon, so I'm thinking that's Gigalith in the back, especially because he brought Porygon. Ice Beam. That's not gonna do anything. Didn't freeze. Nice. So the game plan is, uh, Tapu Fini is definitely going to switch out into Gigalith. I could just, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Z-move into Porygon because Porygon doesn't run Protect. And I'm going to click the, uh, the Petal Dance and hope it attacks Porygon. Uh, like ideally, the way this turn, I hope it goes, I all attack Porygon, all my mods. So we got the first one in the Porygon. Hopefully my second Petal Dance goes into Porygon too. Nice, that's exactly what I wanted. That's like the best turn. And he doesn't get a trick room up. Nice. I think I just win. I just win right here. 
That's like the best possible term for me. I'd be so mad if I was my opponent. Not gonna lie. I'd be like, oh my god, I'm getting swept by this Oricorio. Ooh, and Oricorio's Super Sonic Sky Strike will definitely, definitely, definitely be able to knock out. Definitely be able to knock out Porygon at that range, just based on the pedal dance damage and the fact that both were able to hit into it. So Porygon is gonna go down. We prevent Trick Room. Gigalith is definitely coming out next. Ice Beam can still freeze. Don't though. Don't. It's Oricorio. Nice. So again, we know that's Scarfini. And this next turn, I protect Oricorio. I always protect the Oricorio, and um, I let Petal Dance do what it has to do. And at the end of the day, the Pokemon he has left, he has Coco and Gigalith. Like, if this attack doesn't hit, if this attack doesn't hit Gigalith, it does not matter, because I have Scarf Crocodile in the back to click Earthquake. But I protect the Petal Dance because, like I said, it's such a good situation for me. The turn that um, Oricorio can hit up to everything. Let's see what Petal Dance ends up hitting. Ends up hitting the best Pokemon in the field, too, for me to hit. Now let us see if Oricoro also feels like hitting Crocodile. I mean, even if it hits Feeny. I mean, I don't know why I call it Crocodile, but ended up hitting Tapu Feeny, so that means I am definitely going to be sweeping this Earthquake. I'm seeing my opponent going for Constant or Crush, but my opponent decides to go for the... Uh, my opponent decides to go for the... Uh, the rock slide instead. But like I said, this should just be a win for this should just be a win for Crocodile in the back anyway. Cause Coco should go down and Coco can also get rid of Torco plus Crocodile in the same hit. So that's a game. That's definitely a game. And my opponent ended up disconnecting. I mean it was my win anyway. So I get the points for that, so I'm not worried about the disconnect now. I've learned. Thank you guys for telling me. I definitely learned that I get the points for disconnecting, but that's definitely my opponent's loss right there. Oof. Let's go ahead and look for another battle. I think we're on our way to the 1600s now. Obviously right here, it'll take a second to update, but... Let me pick a island. Okay, I found one. This dude's name is Zero. I feel like I played you the other day. I did. Metagross plus Bulldoze Arcanine. Uh... So Torque on the back is huge for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually just going to go Lilico again. Uh, it's just too good versus this type of team, especially because after you is just so good in this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go the same thing. And then bring Crocodile after because Crocodile can revenge kill everything. So yeah, like let's say my opponent leads off a of Metagross plus Arcanine. Uh, I Quiver Dance up and switch out Lilligan into... Oricorio, my opponent goes for Flare Blitz into my, um, into my Lilligant. Lilligant goes down. I then get in uh, Torkoal once, a time, uh, once again, and it beats down everything. So I think it's okay like this. And plus I have Crooked on the back for foul play for either Metagross as well as the, um, as well as the Arcanine. He does have the Trick Room option though. All right, let's see guys if we can go 6-0 with this team. Here's hoping. I'm really hoping that we go 6-0 with this team though. Really, really hoping. I would love to go undefeated with this team. This has been the most fun so far. I haven't even brought the back two Pokemon. I know it's been repetitive sweeps, but it's just so fun for me. All right, see how my opponent deals with Lilicole. Lele Arcanine. So when I see a, when I see a Lele lead. You would think that my opponent would definitely fear... Oh, Arcanine is faster than that. You would think that my opponent would definitely fear Sleep Powder into uh, Arcanine. So I'm going to actually go off that and overheat directly into uh, Lele. So I'm going to after you overheat into Lele and hope my opponent fears Sleep Powder and protects with Arcanine. Because I would, I would do that if I was in that situation. Let's see if it works that way though. Also, I know a lot of Arcanines don't actually care. This should be able to knock out Lele unless it's extremely bulky. And it lived on one! Ah. Uh, so I don't get the Oricorio sweep this game. But I might get a Crocodile sweep with Earthquake. Hold up. Though he's going to shatter Psyche into Torkoal. Or Psychic into Torkoal, rather. It lived on one, man. Okay, so that definitely didn't go the way I wanted it to. The main reason I didn't switch out into Torkoal is because I was scared of Shattered Psyche from um, 
from the uh, from the Lele, but at least we get in my uh, Oricorio plus my Crocodile. No, I mean it's my only last two Pokemon, so I actually have to do this anyway. What is my opponent's last few Pokemon? If he has Porygon in the back, I lost. I can't touch Porygon at all. Let me see. Doesn't have a flying immunity. Maybe there's potential. I Earthquake and I uh, Air Cutter for guaranteed damage. I wish I recorded had Quiver Dance in the zone. Like, I wasn't sure what to do versus this. Porygon? Oh, yeah, Porygon 2. So I have to go for the crit earthquake on Porygon 2. I think. I should have Revelation Dance. Why did I air cutter? Thinking about it. Because Revelation Dance at least hit single target, so it would have done a little bit more to Porygon than this air cutter is going to do. But then again, air cutter can also crit. So if it does crit, it does the exact same damage I would have gotten off. So Arcanine is going to come out just to reset that to Imidate. Mm hmm. And I, I still Earthquake. I still Earthquake, and I, I think I go for the crit Super Sonic Sky Strike versus Porygon. Ah, we're getting our first out. I'm not sure how I could have done it differently. Like, if, if I switched out directly into Oricorio, there's that fear of extreme speed. Oh, I could have, I could have let that happen. I could have Earthquake after. All right, so we're going to Super Sonic Strike, uh, Super Sonic Sky Strike into Porygon and Earthquake. Again, both of these moves do have the uh, opportunity to crit. 6.25% chance. Let's see. Ah, I don't get it. Let's see if the Z move crits. I do pop the Mago, though. Assuming it's Mago. Yep. All right, Oricorio. I need you to do your thing, bro. I definitely need you to do your thing. You got to crit a Z move, bro. You got to crit a Z move. Man, it really hurt that that at, uh, or over he didn't knock him out. I definitely should have done, I guess, differently than this. Maybe lead Crocodile? No, that wouldn't have helped, because that would have also put me, made me switch out. If this KOs... <gasps> it actually just KO'd! Hold up, there's still potential. Porygon's gone. Porygon is gone. Not my Oricorio. Oricorio's gone, too. <laughs> Alright, so at least Arcanine does go down to Earthquake here. What's his last? I can't believe Porygon died at 45%. Oh, Snorlax, I lose. Yep. Uh, he just protect belly drums. Could I have won even if it was... Even if I didn't lose Oricor? I couldn't have. I don't think I could have. I mean... There's, like I said, there's still crit potential. Like, it's single target. I can still crit on Snorlax. So, assume me a belly drums right here, and then I crit Earthquake after. He just went right for frustration. Does it to a KO? It does not. All right, we have multiple opportunities here. Come on, Crocodile, do your thing, bro. You got two opportunities. I actually need a crit on both times, I think, to win. Or, no, actually, I just need the crit right now. After I, if I live this frustration. Ah, I went down. Oh, man. Okay. We didn't end up winning. No. Unfortunately. Uh, how could I have done it differently? Well, if over you got the kill, I wouldn't have lost Torkoal. And then I could have switched out and then spammed Eruption later. That might have been helpful versus Porygon Snorlax. Maybe. I don't know how I could have done it differently. I'm going to run one more. I'm going to do one more. You know I like to do this after I lose my last one. We're technically 5 and 1 with the team. But I want I just want to do one more. Plus, I want to see where my rank is at. Okay, I'm 1579. I'm 78. I was 1579 before, so I think that it might have been 1600s. Is it the AC really not on? What? Is that why I've been dying? Alright, last game of the day. No matter what. Salamence plus Metagross. So I've been told versus this to lead. Fermosa Crocodile? Or Carl's still okay in this. 
Pheromosa Crocodile. I think Lilicole in the back. Lilicole in the back is a little bit better. Yeah, Pheromosa Crocodile, Lilicole. No Oracle out of this one. Pheromosa plus, uh, basically, Ice Beam picks up, Ice Beam plus uh, Rock Slide picks up the KO on Assault Vest Salamence. And Rock Slide plus High Jump Kick also picks up the KO on Nine Tails. Plus, Scarf Crocodile has a really good matchup versus my opponent's team. And Lilico in the back is really good when um, either Salamence is gone or Marowak or Nihiligo are weakened, which I think that Crocodile plus Feromosa lets me do. But I think that's the best bet. Worst lead for me would be Mens Bulu, but I couldn't see that as a lead. Especially because I have Torkoal. Like, Lilicole is such a decent lead versus this. Maybe Nihiligo plus Faramosa. I could have brought... I could have brought Oricoro because Faramosa also has Quiver Dance. You guys haven't seen that, but Faramosa does have Quiver Dance. I'm not sure. We'll see, though. This music is fire. Team Skull, okay. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Bulu. <laughs> uh, Bulu Marowak. Probably the worst lead for, for me. I get up Intimidate though on Bulu, which is nice. I think I... What do I do here? I have to switch out my... Uh... Okay, so I think I Ice Beam into Bulu to weaken it, and I switch out Crocodile into uh, Torkoal. That obviously weakens my Russian Spin, but I would think that Marowak would protect, fearing Tectonic Rage, or even switch out into Mence. So I might, I should have actually might have... Maybe I could have... I probably should just foul play the uh, Marowak and just risk sacking Crooked out, but then that would have made it harder for Nihiligo if he has it in the back. Ideally, Marowak protects here. Alright, Salamence. Yeah. So, not exactly what I wanted. But if he goes for like Horn Leech or Bloom Doom or anything, Torkoal eats. Oh, okay, okay. Good turn for me, good turn for me. This is just an eruption and ice beam. Like I ice beam into Mence and I click eruption. That's a good turn. Yep. I don't see a downside to that. Even if it's a salt vest Mence, I weaken it for Crocodile. For even Lilligant and Torkoal. And like no matter what, if he switches out into Marowak, it's gonna take a ton anyway here. And plus, silence will go down no matter what. Let's see if it's Assault Vest. It is indeed Assault Vest. Drops Draco. Ah, Feramosa or Torkoal? Yeah, smarter to drop it on Torkoal, I think. Does not pick up the KO, though. Does he Bloom Doom in Torkoal as well? Smart. Smart man. Assuming that's Torkoal. And not Feramosa. Well, I mean, why would you attack Feramosa there? The Salamis is the bigger threat. But looking at it, he probably has Metagross in the back if he did bring Salamence. Oh, he attacks in the Feramosa. Nice. I live this. Shout out to the Focus Sash. Okay. I'll take it. This isn't going to kill Bulu at all. I don't think it will kill Mence, to be honest. Hey, but Torkoal gets just a little bit of recovery, and I think that I can win the game with, uh... Okay, I'm going to assume that Salamence switches out into, uh... That Salamence switches out into Mero... Should I make that call an overheat? No, the smarter play is just... The safer play is just the Ice Beam, and then overheat the, uh... The Bulu. 
Yeah, like I wanted to make that call and quiver dance up. Oh, he goes nine tails. Okay, so that's fine. So we've seen of his entire team. Foul play still has a chance to sweep because it can knock out Marowak and it will knock out Salamence at the range is at. I'm surprised he did that. I'm really surprised he did that. Considering I could have eruption there, but I guess it wouldn't have done any damage anyway. Rock slide. Will that knock me out? I don't think that knocks out Torko. That's minus one. Torko land. Torko, I need you to land, bro. Torko, if you're gonna do anything in this game, it's land right now. Mmm. Man, Torko, you needed to do one thing right there. Because if you overheated, I could have after you would overheated after. Yes. I could have after you overheated after. I have to go Lilligan here. And try after you uh, overheat. Is Ninetales the bigger? Yeah, it is. Like, Bulu's a threat too, but. Ninetales can protect here too, but I have to after you overheat. Man! That play could have been so much better for me if I, that actually connected. I think I lose this one too. Ah, I hate double losses. Surprised it went Ninetales over, like, Marowak. Like, what if I. I guess I wouldn't have a jump kick there. I think I think too much about it. And Sun isn't even up, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's the game. I after you so Torko could outspeed Bulu. Uh, before Bulu potentially knocked it out with Horn Leech or something. But I guess Blizzard was also something there. Oh well. I was also hoping it was freeze dry and not blizzard. Ah. Well, there's one way to win this game. And it's definitely possible. Where there is a will, there is a rock slide. Where there is a will, there is a rock slide. Like I said, where there is a will, there is a rock slide. And we got grassy terrain too, so Petal Dance has to hit in the Bulu. And I have to flinch nine tails. Well, let's see what you got to do. Pedal dance, hit Bulu, flinch nine tails, and flinch the rest of his team to death, I guess. That's the only thing I can do with Crocodile. I got to VGC my way out of it. All right, hold up. Hold up. If he doesn't protect, I can still, I can still, if, if I get the flinch on, if I get the flinch, I can still do this. Because he also resets the grass terrain if it ends. Let's see. Where there is a will, there is a rock slide. And I have a will. Not yet. But one day I will. But I do have the will right here. I do I mean, there's still a will. There's still a rock slide. But, like, obviously getting rid of nine cells and making it a 1v1 with, um, with the crazy Lilligan under terrain. I got my kill at least. Yeah, because he would have to go back out into. Uh, I could have went out into. Not Bulu and Marowak instead. I'm going to run right here just to end it. Like, even though there is still potential, like Rock Slide crits into. I'll go for it. You know what? I'm not going to end it. Let's see. Rock Slide and Curl still uh, crit flinch. I have 15 more chances to win. And we're going to go for it. I always do that though. When I lose that one game, I end up losing the other one. I still think if I hit over here, I might have had a uh, potential chance with just Crooked out in the back. Because all I have to do is foul play Marowak. And then, um... Because Salamence doesn't knock me out one hit. I don't think Hydro Pump would knock me out. And I still have two Pokemon. Oh well. Still knocking out Nine Tails would still be an issue. Like, knocking out Nine Tails would be an issue regardless. Alright, so we learned from that. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. I still enjoyed like all of the Oricorio play. It was so fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Of course, if you did, feel free to leave a like and uh, subscribe. Check out the playlist down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, friends.